Structure called the And as usual. Stay triggered. Pew pew. Pew. Alright everyone, welcome back to your night guide for Brigandine, the legend of Renarzia. Uh, some of these videos have gotten out a little bit slow, but we'll catch up to that and we'll get right into it and we'll finish all of these uh, within this year, I believe. But anyways, before we get into it, if you enjoy this kind of content, definitely leave a like, leave a sub. That would help the channel a lot. But let's start on one of my favorite characters in uh, this game as a whole, completely. Umamaro, right here. Here's the uh, the little man with the top hat, with the blasty cap. Uh, don't think of him as a glass cannon. He is an actual full tank cannon. So let's check him out. Let's see what he's about, and let's see why you may want to use him. Some people say he's not that great, but I'd have to say that they're totally and completely wrong. You can argue me in the comments all you want. I stand by my statement. All right, let's get into it and talk about this guy. So we've got this character here. Um, let me actually back out, go to, well, actually, yeah, let's um, let's look at it from here. So essentially, uh, he is an automaton or an automation, so sentient machine, robot, whatever. The command range is not that good. Growth rate right now, not that great. Growth is barely kind of just okay just kind of average C um, the good thing about this guy is he is inorganic body which if we actually click on this here prevents the following status conditions pretty much everything that a brigandine can do so he is like another ruler with an automatic brigandine attached to him you don't have to worry about poison charm none of that stuff um, you don't have to worry about that so, that's one thing he's really good at. Once he actually comes into the cell automation uh, area of s leveling up, then he gets this ba uh, magic barrier of A. Initially, he'll get a magic barrier of C with the first level up, and then it just jumps up to A. So, increases resistance by 25%, kind of like a Shogun skill from uh, Grand Edition, something like that, just anti-magic all around 25% extra barrier to it so you can avoid all these and resist all these too now the only thing he's really going to be weak to is going to be water and holy spells but that's what you're going to have to look at so he does equip human gear uh, you might think it's monster gear no that is um, that is the Zor illusion that equips monster gear but he can equip orbs so if you have somebody on your team like Pick that uh, uses orbs or, or you know golems and stuff, you can put an orb slot in here. There's some really good orbs you can give to Umaro to increase his damage and make it kind of interesting. Conflicting orb is actually quite interesting because you have white, black to put into his skill slot, which would make it red, black, and white, which would be interesting. Uh, there's other orbs in here, different combinations to do. I'm not going to go into all the details there, but you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, this Umamaro, I did level up a little bit with some potions and stuff, so his stats might be a little bit different. Uh, he does come with light armor. So he has this light armor breastplate here, chest piece. And so that's what you can give him. He gets gauntlets and rings. All right, let's look at his skill magic here. All right, so he has this uh, tetra charge, right? So if I can, if I can circle, here we go. All right, so tetra charge, all this stuff. Uh, let me, you know, let me just clear this out real quick. So, and uh, we'll talk about this because this is interesting. So this video might be a little longer than usual. This is his final attack with tetra charge or sorry not attack but um, this is the thing that restores his attack is this skill right here he can use it anytime you can move and use it you can use it then move doesn't seem to matter it's quite nice for that fact and it will increase his MP by 125 percent now if you're playing this game and you're not looking at things you're gonna probably forget to charge him if he doesn't have the mana to charge to use, he won't be able to do an attack, whether it's the Super Umamaro Cannon 
or the Umamaro Burst. Umamaro Burst is just him slamming up against the enemy with his uh, with his metallic uh, hat, and he does damage that way. It has accuracy plus 17, power of 155. But um, as you see here, as you see here with this down on the bottom here, MP10 and Super Umamaro Cannon 150. So both of these use MP, whether it's counterattacking or basic attacking. I think maybe people really didn't realize that when they were going into it, but it's always best to check every character, especially if they're special characters, just to see what's going on with that. And this might be one of those things that you may have forgotten, but if you run out of MP, he literally cannot do anything. So literally what I do when I'm playing a game is I set up, I might do an attack with the Umamaro Burst, but then the next attack is I do Super Umamaro Cannon, which is a pre-move. So you have to stand there for a turn to be able to do it. You can't just do it any anytime you want, any willy-nilly time. But it shoots four spaces in a row, which is pretty amazing, and does this much power damage. It's insane. It's really, really good. So if you want to set up for the best attack you can do with one of the best attacking characters in a game, also one of the best tanks in a game, you want to set up for this. After you do this, then you want to move right back to Tetra Charge and you want to charge up your MP so you can do another Umaro, Super Umamaro Cannon. That's kind of what you want to do. And if you're getting bombarded by enemies all around, they'll keep forcing you to do counterattacks, forcing you to do uh, Umamaro Bursts, which will force you to use what little MP you have left. So I know it's only 10, but every little bit's going to count. So what do we have to start with here if we, uh, you know, just come back here and look at this? Well, we got 216 MP. At least that's what I've been able to get them. So really one, pretty much we're looking at, if we're going to look at this clearly here, Let's um, basically say you're going to get one Super Umamaro Cannon, be down to maybe 50 MP, whatever. You get attacked about four times. That's another 40 MP lost from there. You'll almost be completely out of MP. So the next turn, you're probably going to just want to Tetra Charge. And if you're constantly getting attacked all over the place, you got nobody to defend them, then you might have to do a second Tetra Charge in a second turn. It's, it's okay, in a sense, because your power level with Umar Burst is 155, which is pretty good. Accuracy is pretty good. But if you have other guys around you, you can just set him up to do cannon shots. So you can constantly just slam the enemy with... Well, not exactly constantly, but you, every other turn you can slam them with the Super Umar Cannon, which does phenomenal damage. It's really, really good. You have to try this out. You have to see what, see it for yourself. It's pretty cool. It doesn't have any element uh, charges in it when you use it, but like it says, it deals massive damage to all units in a four hex straight line, and it never misses. So it's insane. What I'm trying to say is, this is like a cannon shot, an energy cannon shot, wh however you want to call it. It's really cool, and you'll just love it when you get get to use it. Now his other stats here with only being able to have three for command range is kind of stifling so you kind of want to keep characters next to him. Uh, you can't really have a very mobile team with him. It's really a tank team with ranged blast damage. Kind of just think like you know setting up a dragon line that would be a good thing for it. But um, yeah. So what does it say here? Umamaro gender we don't know age we don't know essentially he was found in the ocean by pluto uh he's a cell automation background is a machine pluto somehow revived by using magic to piece together mysterious spare parts brought bought from flea markets he calls himself an automation though uh, neither stella nor pluto know what that even means let alone what language the word is from Although his birth and construction remains a mystery, it is evident that his main source of power is mana energy. He wears a hand-me-down cape given to him by Pluto and considers himself a rune knight just like those around him. 
So he's kind of a sentient being. He wants to be a part of the crew. He's a he's a cool little guy, and he's just trying to fit in, you know. And uh, really, that's all I have for. That's really all I have for Umamaro. I hope you enjoy. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I think he's literally one of the best characters you can get in a game, special character wise. Um, I'd probably consider him something akin to like a Dinadan from the original, although, you know, not not exactly with power in the way it works, but I mean, Dinadan was a very powerful, reliable character in Legend of Forcina. Umaro is a very powerful, reliable character here. The only person that could really do him a lot of damage would be Rudo, to a decent degree, because Rudo is um, a white element. But even still, at this point, the defense is up to 150, naturally speaking, which is really, really good. Uh, before we get out of here, how about we just check out the class so you can kind of see what that looks like leveling up. So let's do that real quick. And I'll show you what it kind of looks like from the beginning. So if you were a prototype, you can only really be a prototype in the um, two other modes, not this mode. But if you were a prototype, you start off with black element, and that's your uh, prototype level here on the right. And uh, that's what we're looking at is this section over here. And that's kind of how that looks with defense, 120. Not that great, but still starting defense as a prototype, that's not bad. Your mobility is actually down one too. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what it is. You are a plane moving robot, essentially. We move up to automation if we get the upgrade there. That comes at level, I believe, yeah, it's yeah level 20. I believe you get the upgrade from there. And um, you still have a negative mobility. You can see the stats have gotten a little bit wider. You're in automation at that point, but at this point with automation, you get the magic barrier of C versus in prototype. Um, oh, wait a second. I wonder if something's changed. I always thought that you didn't get it at all in prototype. Maybe they fixed something. Maybe I'm, I don't know, thinking incorrectly here, but I thought initially prototype didn't get a magic barrier until automation. Maybe they changed some stuff. I'll have to look into this. But um, essentially, yeah, I don't think you get magic barrier C as a prototype. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, but automation, you definitely should have it by then. And then once you become a cell automation, you get magic barrier of A. Uh, so that's kind of the difference there, the tetra charge does cost a little bit different. The burst is a little more powerful with each stage too. So, I mean, we could talk about this, but you know, it's just gonna be a little more powerful and the charge is gonna cost a little bit more to go through. But essentially that's it for Umamaro. He's one of my absolute favorite characters in a game. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Love to hear your opinions and all that. And as always, stay triggered and uh, I'll see you in the next guide video.